Welcome to Econ Talk, part of the Library of Economics and Liberty. I'm your host, Russ Roberts, of George Mason University and Stanford University's Hoover Institution. Our website is econtalk.org, where you can subscribe, find other episodes, comment on this podcast, and find links and other information related to today's conversation. Our email address is mail at econtalk.org. We'd love to hear from you. Today is July 18th, 2012, and my guest is David Brady. David Brady has many titles. He's at the Hoover Institution. He's in the Department of Political Science at Stanford and the Graduate School of Business at Stanford. And if you want his full list of titles and how I've made fun of him in the past, you can listen to past podcasts with Dave. Dave, welcome back to Econ Talk. Thanks. Our topic today is uh, November 2012, what's going to happen in the election, and we're going to mainly focus on the presidential election, although I'll be interested in your thoughts on the Senate and the House as well. But let's start with the president. Uh, we're in July. We're at a period where Romney has yet to pick a uh, vice president, uh, so that's where we are for those of you listening perhaps a little bit later than, than the live version of this. What is, uh, what's going on with the president? What's going on with the challenger? Well, the way I like to think about this is you're into the campaign season now, and in some elections, the state of the economy is uh, in in a situation where either the incumbent's going to win or the incumbent's in trouble. And uh, this is an election where the incumbent's in trouble, uh, so it's going to be a close election. Most of the economic uh, models that I use, Free Model and uh, Doug Hibbs Model, those models show the election pretty close, though Hibbs' model includes both the economy and troops abroad. Uh, Doug Hibbs' model predicts that Obama will lose. The Ray Fair model, the Yale economist, predicts it'll be close to 50-50. I think it's going to be a close election, and the campaign's going to matter a lot. So let's, given the current polls, which I think show some, but show it to be close, right? I think that's what they show right now. It's a little bit surprising given the state of the economy. So uh, it's hard to understand why Obama is doing so well. As you say, the Hibs, you know, the Hibs model has some foreign policy stuff, but it's, it's quite small. I think it's actually, I think it's, it's deaths. It's, 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 uh, right. it's deaths, deaths yeah. in yeah. war and, and U.S. deaths are relatively low. There's every death is a tragedy, but the magnitudes are relatively low relative to past. Right. Uh, so wars. that's a and, smaller and given his, factor. Yeah, given his right. coefficients on that, there's very little impact. Uh, although you could argue that the sensitivity of Americans to casualties has changed, I suspect it has. Um, it has. Uh, so, but given, so that's small. The economy is doing all the work in his model, and it, basically it's a model that looks at past elections and how, uh, I think it looks at the growth in personal income, actually, right. yep. period, not, uh, not unemployment. But if you look across any set of economic variables, people are not happy with what's going on. president doesn't have much to campaign on. Uh, why is he doing so well? Well, what he has to campaign on is he ha what, what he, the only thing he can campaign on is the fact that Mitt Romney is not an acceptable alternative. So, if you remember in uh, the Carter uh, Reagan election in 1980, that election, given the state of the economy, was a lot closer even in uh, late September than you, the model would have predicted. And the Carter campaign was, this guy's not responsible, he's too conservative, he's the kind of guy that would lob a nuclear weapon into the men's room at the Kremlin just to prove he was tough. And and that sort of sold, but then the debates came and people decided, hey, Reagan That's isn't so Carter scary. and he's okay. And so the Romney campaign, my view of the ideal Romney campaign is uh, kind of low-key in which he continues to make the point, I'm not Obama. And um, and therefore, uh, my view of that is uh, th that that's the way he's got to run the campaign. And Obama's campaign, you look at the ads he's uh, already at, Bain, all of those things, he's driving the whole point home that this is not a guy who can do better than I did. Romney's a rich, a rich, yep. out-of-touch, outsourcer of American jobs, greedy fat cat. Exactly. Exactly. So that's his campaign, uh, and like you say, mm -hmm. with reference to the Carter-Reagan question whether it'll stick or not may be affected by the debates. Uh, right. It seems to be sticking now in some dimension. Yes, it is. It's still, you know, you expect the polls at this time to be moving around because most people aren't paying much attention. 
they'll start to pay it. The, the people who are going to decide this election, the independents, are not paying a tremendous amount of attention at this point. The uh, de- Democrats in this, all the Democrats are very, they like Obama. Republicans don't like Obama. Next to George W. Bush, he's the greatest divider since we've been doing public opinion. That is, subtract the percent of his party that like him minus the percent of the other party that doesn't like him. So if it's 90-10, there's an 80-point gap. The third and fourth highest gaps are Obama. So Obama's a divider. means Democrats are going to vote Democrat. Republicans are going to vote Republican. Isn't that due to steroid use in Major League Baseball? I mean, I mean we, <laughs> these, this swelling of, of these gaps. I mean, just is it a coincidence uh, that, that these that the two big gaps are the last two presidents, or, or is it really that there is something changing? That is a uh, that is a, a first rate question. I, I believe that uh, there has been an increase in partisanship. So for the first time uh, with the President Bush, we began to see statistically significant differences. When you asked Democrats uh, what they thought of the economy under Bush, it was horrible. You asked Republicans. That was not so bad. So that the partisan preferences actually drove uh, the perception of the economy. And that's the first time that had happened in all of our polling data. So that's new. Going back how far? Oh, that data goes back. You can go back to 1937. Okay, so what you're saying then is that if if we had polled, when you did poll Democrats uh, in the late 70s, about the economy, they admitted it wasn't very good. Right, exactly. And when you polled republic, uh, excuse me, when you polled uh, uh, Republicans in in ni- early nineteen nineties, when George Senior was president, they would have admitted it wasn't so good. Yes, yes. Uh, probably the better example was under Ford in the seventies. They just said it wasn't good. Now that's, in my view, that's by and large the result of this sorting process. What's happened? in American politics is the number of Democrats have gone down, the number of Republicans has gone up, uh, not, I'm sorry, the number of Republicans has, uh, and Democrats have gone down. Both. And the number of independents has risen. Which sounds like less partisanship, you'd think. Yes, in the electorate. But what's happened, in my view, is that at the, uh, at the elite level, at the committed party level, activists, uh, provide the juice, the money, the ideas, and so uh, the political parties are uh, are captured by them, and the numbers are smaller. So the gap between Democrats and Republicans is now about six percent to the in identifi- Democrats in identification. Yes, and, six, I'm sorry, to interrupt. Yeah. Six percent. Yes, pro Democrat, yeah. pro Democrat. So that percentage means points. That means that a Republican has to get sixty percent of the independent vote to win, where Obama could split the independent vote. So if Obama wins, at which he'll win the Democratic vote and the Republican, and there'll be on the margin turnout questions there, which are really again. important. Say that again. So if uh, so, given that there's, uh, a, let's say, after turnout, a five percentage gap. So if just Democrats and Republicans voted, Obama would win by five percent. So how how do you make up that five? How do Republicans make up that five percent gap? They have to they win sixty percent win the of independents. But if Obama split the if they split the independents, Obama wins. Obama wins. That's the point. So, yeah. and those independents aren't paid. So we've been tracking through YouGov Polymetrics, the Economist poll. We've been asking weekly questions on these issues like. Uh, that what the chattering class when they deal with this issue of uh, oh say the Catholic uh, what, making Catholic hospitals uh, have insurance policies that paid for abortion counseling and abortions or contraception and that people were going oh that's the end of the Obama administration the Catholics yeah, will vote it, against them he just and, lost the election I yeah, people would say. every week they have that so we've been tracking <laughs> that we've been tracking that every week. You know and for, first of all most people uh, uh, some a majority you've been tracking, you've been tracking just. Not how people view it, but just whether they know about yeah, it. Yeah, right? whether they know about it. Yeah. And, uh, and so 45%, mo- on average, about half haven't heard about it. Whatever the issue of the week is. Whatever the issue of the week. week is, they haven't heard about it. <laughs> and uh, when they hear about it, when you follow up, they don't, mm, uh, you know, I don't know. Sure what I don't, happened. Yeah, I heard about it, but I, I'm not thinking about it at all. I don't know. Will it affect my vote? No, I, I don't really know. I heard about it. Uh, so that whereas the junkies are writing about it every yeah the junkies minutes. write about they're, talk about it. it's on about CNN it. for the next three days and it's on Fox and it's on but it's three days and it's gone at but, the end of the year we'll have 
will aggregate all those and ask if that affected the vote at all. Because the nice point about an internet poll that YouGov does is we got the same people over time. Yeah, I just want to mention that, yeah. that when, when you use the term internet poll, you do not mean a splash screen on a, a ESPN. No. <laughs> you mean <laughs> no, having I people mean, log on yeah. and it's a panel of very well Yeah, scientifically collected. weighted yeah. so that it's uh, representative. Um, the part that's hard for people, I think, to understand, and I, our colleague Mofi Arena at the Hoover Institution recently uh, made this point, it's hard to understand how these issues, hot-button issues that come up every few weeks, you know, that Romney's an outsourcer, or is, it comes out, there's a report that Bain outsourced jobs when he was involved, and, uh, or this Catholic controversy with uh, health care. It's, it's hard to imagine they don't have these big effects because, after all, they're, the news is saturated with them. But as Mofi Arena, I think, pointed out, uh, not that many people watch the news. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> it's just, it's a small me. number. No, uh, they don't. So, for, for example, Rachel Maddow, Stanford grad, uh, very popular. A lot of people you hear, if you chatter in class, she has 400,000 viewers. The O'Reilly Show, which is the most popular cable news show, gets about two and a half to three million people. Uh, so the facts are not many people are, are listening to these things. The percent watching uh, uh, Dancing with the Stars is so much greater than uh, anything you'd see on CNN is less than a million viewers. Which is why Romney needs to get on Dancing with the Stars, clearly. Yes, so that would be the key to <laughs> success. If he can dance, yeah. Yeah, well, no, it doesn't matter. It just needs to people see on these. In fact, it'd be better if he couldn't dance well. <laughs> Show he's human. He could relate to yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so people aren't paying it. So, so two points so far. Most people aren't paying attention. Certainly, most independents, right. a, a bigger percentage of independents, right. this is not just a casual observation. Independents know less about uh, government and candidates on average than people who are committed fully part. And that's more true now because the, par the people who are partisan, who claim they're partisans, have sorted. Democrats are now liberals. Republicans are now conservative. Those numbers are smaller. Yeah, and so the bigger... The, 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 lar the large group in the middle right. is the independents, and they're not paying much attention. Right. Which one conclusion one could draw from that is that not to put much trust in the polls right now. Uh, that's, that's essentially true. I mean, if one candidate was ahead by 20 points, you might worry about that. But remember, in uh, 1988, uh, at about this time, right in July, mid-July, Dukakis was ahead of uh, Vice President Bush then by about 14 points. So, who? So there are big, big Bush swings that, that occur. I think. Yes, and at this time in '76, Carter was, I, I think, 20 points ahead of Ford, and you know he narrowly won. So there's a so lot. So things can change. Now, yes, I've but I think they change in line with the fundamentals of the economy. So I think it's possible Romney could win. So, so let's go back analogously to '70 uh, to '80. It was possible for Reagan to win with a landslide, pretty much as he did. Because the fundamentals was, but were so It was so not possible for Carter to win with a landslide. He could win narrowly. I think the same is true for the president this time. President Obama can win narrowly in the Electoral College, uh, but he can't win in a landslide because of the fundamentals, exactly. Whereas Romney could potentially, I don't think he will, be, I don't think he's Reagan, so I don't think it'll happen. Right, so... We're sitting here in July, the other factor, of course. I mean, there's two things that are going to happen between July and November. One's events. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the unemployment rate could, could, could come down a little bit, which would be, help the president. It could climb back up, which would be, I think, devastating. Uh, it, it, hard to predict, of course, which of those is going to happen, although there's some mediocre news recently, which is worrisome. Uh, and, of course, there's the campaign itself, right. uh, and, and politicians differ by their – we have some idea of how Obama is going to campaign. Uh, Romney does not appear to be a stellar campaigner, which I think is going to hold him back, but he's got the fundamentals on the economy. Of course, there's also foreign right. policy. Things could happen in the world right. that would you – know, if Obama had only delayed killing uh, bin Laden – with his bare hands. Yeah. But I would tell, say, you know, I would October, say that on foreign better. policy, uh, the Republicans could make a stake. Uh, for the longest time, uh, there was this uh, claim about issue ownership. Right. Where the Republicans owned the taxation issue, the Democrats owned uh, protecting the middle class and the poor, 
and pro Republicans own, own and yeah. Republicans own foreign policy. That's not true this time. Uh, not, sort of across the board on questions about foreign policy, including the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, and what's happened there. And in terms of terrorism, uh, Obama has uh, eight and ten point leads among independents and a general lead. And, and that's understandable because most Americans aren't sitting around thinking deeply about foreign policy, but we haven't had a terrorist attack in these four years. Osama bin Laden is gone. We're out of Iraq. There are fewer headlines about it. And in Afghanistan, we're pulling down the troops, all of which are generally approved by a majority of Americans. Yeah. So, so the, I think in the past, the Republicans owned the foreign policy issue because of their, what you call their muscular foreign policy or their projection of U.S. power, which I think right now a lot of Americans are a little skeptical about having seen it Agreed. not do so well in Iraq and Afghanistan. I agree, absolutely. Uh, will the choice of the vice president matter? Does it ever matter? Well, when we run, you know, as you, as social science, you know, you run a lot of regressions on it. We, we can't get more than about a percent or so. Now, you know, a percent some can make states. a difference in a some close states. election yeah. and vary on a state. So the last time we were pretty sure... Uh, that it made a difference was uh, JFK when he picked Johnson. It probably helped. Him. It probably caused him to carry Texas, which he wouldn't have. And then in a close election, he would have lost. Since then, uh, I'm going to restrain uh, myself from making yeah, yeah. a reference to Robert Carroll's biographies of Johnson yeah. and Johnson's ability to steal elections in Texas. Yeah. He may be taught some tricks. I don't know. Yeah. But <clears throat> that he they actually won pretty solidly in Texas in '60. Uh, but, but so, uh, at least the question is, uh, so for me, Romney, uh, has uh, done a terrific job of vetting. Uh, he's not looking for, uh, anybody that can carry anything or anything spectacular. I think he generally wants someone who's not going to make a mistake. So that means, uh, it's not going to be Condi Rice because she's too tightly tied to the Bush administration. She's a policy person. She's our colleague here. She's not a politician. She's a policy person. Uh, I think it's going to be someone, and, and Mar- Rubio has some problems. Uh, he might Young help with untested. Florida. Young and untested. But on the other hand, he uh, there's a lot of things you don't know about foreign policy that they might go at, the press might go after him big time on. And nextly, uh, in Colorado and Nevada and states like that, it's just not the case that being Cuban American helps at all with Mexican Americans. In fact, it may even hurt. So uh, I think it's going to be somebody like uh, Palenti, uh, Rob Portman, someone that's very safe and is not going to disturb uh, the ticket. Not going to be not going to be a Sarah Palin. Uh, going to be viewed as someone who could take over from Romney if he's president and uh, and and something happens. I think it's going to be. Yeah the, Bland. yeah, the Jewish phrase there would be parv. Uh, yeah. N- neither this nor that. And uh, he will be, if that's correct, and again, we're doing this in July, uh, I can vouch for the fact that uh, the pick has not been made yet. Dave's out on a limb yeah. here. Uh, uh, he'll be criticized for being cautious and not showing a lot of, uh, which I think is a criticism he gets. Do you think that's a good choice, the, the neutral parv? Choice, or do you think he ought to be? I do. Uh, I think more I, my, aggressive and risk taking. I think his. I think his campaign has to be. I'm not Obama. Uh huh. If if the election uh, it gets to be a referendum on the president's four years, the president loses. If the election gets turned around to be on whether Romney could replace him, then that that puts Romney in trouble. So. To the extent that the campaign goes on any far and it's about Bain and it's about the jobs and it's about when did he quit Bain and those are the questions, uh, that's that's not good for the Romney campaign. Romney needs to be not Obama and uh, and he still has a lead among independents on he'd do better on jobs and turning the economy around. That's what he's got to focus on. Uh, do you think that's a good choice, the cautiousness? Uh, you said that as a positive statement, not a normative one. Yes, I mean, absolutely. What? It's a, uh, I, absolutely because when you look at the uh, question of social issues, go, go across those sorts of things, that uh, immigration. So just just take uh, immigration. All during the primaries, the way the Republican primary are set up, uh, the candidates had to talk about, I'll build a bigger fence, a higher <laughs> fence, I'll put more military troops mm-hmm. in. And then suddenly, now issue. you got the nomination, and Colorado and Nevada are two of the swing states. And Nevada, the interest in Nevada, between 2008 and 2012, because of what happened in Nevada, 
The minority population in Nevada is up 9%. That's mainly Mexican-American. And the white, co- which voted 80% for Obama, for Obama yeah. in 2008. And the white working class population, which voted 60%, 59% for McCain, is down 6%. Well, so that means a that's a big, yeah, it's a big swing. A lot of them aren't working. Yes, that's right. So it's so. a big swing. Uh, they, they might not. Uh, so anyway, the issues like immigration, issues like uh, gay marriage, stuff. Yeah, uh, and thus far he's done a pretty good job. He, when Obama came out and supported gay marriage, Romney didn't comment on it. I think he has to stay off of those things because he, he uh, got to win those independents. You can't. You can't win the independents. The independents don't care uh, about, most Americans don't care, care a little bit about gay area marriage. It's on the periphery. They want to know about their job and the economy and what the future is going to look like. So just to go back to what you started with saying, in the primary season, hot button issues for hardcore Republicans, which are tiny uh, voters, which are a tiny portion of the electorate, right? The people who vote in the Iowa caucuses or the New Hampshire primary just are not... uh, they're they're representative of the hardcore Republican membership, but they're not representative. Of the My favorite is on the day that uh, Santorum won three primaries and became uh, the uh, leading alternative. In fact, for a while, higher uh, higher popularity among Republicans than Romney. Uh, on that day of the three states, Missouri, Maine, whatever the other state was, he led uh, less than two percent of eligible voters voted in those states. In those states that made him right. Yeah. So he. Grab those hardcore people. Yep. Yep. So you're saying that the issues that were important then, Romney is going to just run away from even talking about at all. Well, I, I mean, if, if I smart. was advising if his campaign, smart. that's sure as heck what I'd be telling him. I'd be saying, don't, don't get caught up in this social thing. The American public doesn't care about that. Uh, and, and on a lot of them, you're in a minority position. J- just let those go and talk about the economy. That's the issue. That's the economy. And... To drive that point home, let's talk about what polls show about what people care about. Uh, how important, obviously the economy is important, you can phrase it in different ways. They're worried about the unemployment rate, they're worried about growth, they're worried about the deficit. You know, there are yep. many aspects of the economy people are worried about. You can get and different you, orders. And if you subdivide it, you yeah. can get different rankings, et cetera. But it's the economy, the economy, <laughs> the economy, the economy, whether it's jobs, unemployment, uh, overall stay, all of those things are what matters. So health care is not going to be an issue in this campaign? Health care is uh, slid back uh, as an issue insofar as it could be seen as increasing the deficit. It's an issue, but that's a pretty tough case to make to the American public. What happens on the health care stuff is overall they don't like it. But when you ask Obama them about, care. yeah, but o- overall, when you ask what about uh, individual thing, what they like is stuff that they got for nothing. <laughs> you don't have to have coverage. Your kids go to the 26. That There's no good. pre-testing. Right. They get all of those things. And then and then they say, oh, well, the cost go. Well, that's bad. Yeah. So public, opi- uh, public opinion on health care. And, and then second, Romney is going to have a hard time dealing with yes, that because of the Massachusetts thing. And yes, he is. So he's, yeah, I'd lay off of health care. I just, but it and is I thought down. they made a mistake in the campaign, waiting five days. The tax, the tax thing was like. Uh, Talk, you're uh, talking about the Supreme Court The Supreme decision. Court Talk decision that. that said it's a tax. My view was. And therefore was, it's constitutional. That's a blessing For to the Romney campaign because you say, yes, it's a tax. It's going to raise taxes, which is going to hurt the economy, which is consistent with the message, with the jobs program. And instead, they talk five days about it's a penalty because they called it a penalty before. And then they finally, at the end of five days, came out and said it's a tax. And I guess my view of that is, you, you said earlier, you're not sure how good a campaigner Romney's going to be. And that was one thing to me. That's something that I know people from here have been telling them it's going to come up. You've got to talk about it. You've got to be ready for the court decision. And to have four or five days while you said it was a penalty and a tax and then, and then revert and then revert. To the position it is a tax, that, that seemed to me not not good campaigning. Well, he's not. He does not speak particularly well. I, you know, I just I many disadvantages. He's got a successful, semi-successful administrative track record. He's run something yep. which gives him uh, a level of of comfort with some people that other candidates would not have produced. 
uh, even senators and other right. folks uh, in his party. And of course, well, we'll see what happens. He's um, very smart. He was a great career at Bain. But, you know, if you think about the campaign, Bain, 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 and then after that, jobs are going to be offsourced. And now they're talking about, I'm not going to release these taxes. And every time they're talking about that, and that's playing on public opinion, that's staying off the campaign message. Right. That, uh, I, yeah. Then it's about him and not about the president. Yeah, those tax returns must not be very attractive because his w- in unwillingness to release them is, I think, very damning. Uh, uh, it's like not testifying at your own trial. I, I you know, think there's an that, argument for for it. You can understand the the reason someone might struggle to uh, to deal with that well, but I think it's damning. Right, but it link- so if you think about it, the the Obama. So look. Whatever you think about the president as a uh, as a as a person running the government and, and his policies, uh, suppose you suppose you think those are wrong and badly of the president on that ground. No one, no one who's semi rational can say the guy's not a great campaigner. Yeah, he's a good campaigner. So the question is, he going to run? So if you think of the way what he's done, what they've done thus far is. They brought up questions about his tax return, about his bane, about outsourcing jobs. And and that all builds up. So there's bang, bang, bang. And they got more stuff. There's oh yeah, no they, doubt. It's, it's early. In fact, I'm surprised right. and how so, early this is. Which it's either they've got really good stuff later, or they're just too early. And it does. My bet is <laughs> they're not too early. That they're going to build this, and it's going to be kind of a layering. Starts here, builds there, and and they're trying to create an impression. Now, the one time I know that that did happen was uh, in the Dole campaign in '96. Bob Dole took. Federal matching money. The campaign uh, for the nomination took too long. His campaign, uh, after he finally got the nomination, there was a two and a half to three month period where he had no money to spend because he'd agreed to the campaign limits. And until September, you don't get the money. And the Clinton people didn't have it. And they banged away and painted a portrait of him that he could never Overcome. Never get by. Now, uh, Romney can... Are you can, suggesting this is going to be negative campaigning in this election? I'm suggesting <laughs> that, yes, both of them, the, yeah. uh, uh, the, well, Romney has to campaign against the president, and the president's only chance is uh, not to be about his record, but to say, oh, uh, to say Romney's a worse choice. Yeah, it's going to be nasty. Uh, fortunately, I live in California, and therefore there'll be no commercials. Uh, Texas, I mean, depending. So Why take a look at those. Oh, because nobody. Because no it's one. A, there's Obama's no. Obama's going to win it. So this. Yeah, no I have not seen a single. Uh, occasionally, you know, when I watch CNN, the Washington thing, I might see a little commercial, but uh, you don't. No, the state. You know, the swing states are the ones that are, are already getting all the messages. And all the money's going in there. Uh, is there a big difference so far in their money accumulations? I yeah, uh, Romney has uh, raised a little bit, a uh, little bit more money, and you know we don't know about these uh, new packs, uh, but uh, Romney has done uh, a little bit better, and that's an indication that people who are anti-Obama are really anti-Obama. The people who are pro-Obama are a little less pro-Obama than they were in two thousand and eight. But I, I don't think that a lack of money will uh, be the determining factor in this election. They're both going to have plenty of money to. Attack each other. So it makes life more complicated, but we do have in the United States this thing called the Electoral College. You mean more complicated? That keeps me in business. Yeah, it's good for Dave Brady, bad for the rest of us, but uh, or not. <laughs> I actually think it's, it has its virtues, but um, it, unappreciated, and especially because of the, I think the average person has an unfortunate uh, romantic association of democracy with one man, one vote, uh, and majority rule, which I think is a horrible thing, majority rule by itself. Uh, so things that get us away from majority rule, like the Constitution and the Electoral College, have a, so I have a, weak, a soft place in my heart for them. But that's the way it is. We've got the Electoral College, so the real question that this election comes down to is not who's going to get the popular vote, even though we're going to pay a lot of attention to that, the way right. we pay attention to like runs scored or points in football. It's not how many points you score, it's how many points you score relative to the opposition in certain key cases. And so, uh, just as a baseball team can have a winning record, even though it's outscored, a president can win re-election if he doesn't take the popular vote. So what's going to ultimately matter is, those, is the key swing state. So what do we know about them right now? 
Because it's kind of interesting. Well, there, uh, I, I uh, just looked at them the other day, polls uh, that I, so, you know, there's uh, too many polls, and the question is how many are reliable, but so I'm, without going into them, I'm going to talk about the polls, like Quinnipack and others that I, I believe are valid polls, and then there's a question of whether they're sampling registered voters or just likely general voters. samples. A lot of likely fudge, voters. A lot of potential. Well, you don't know, so, you know, most of the time sample. they don't know who's registered. Yeah, the problem is, it's not, it's not predicting how uh, some uh, English professor from Stanford is going to vote in the election. The question is, is he going to vote? That's, that, that's, so the, uh, and those different, on the margin, the, those things can help determine election. But um, so the states, uh, so there are certain states that are, are going to be key in this case, that both parties have agreed are, are the key states. Colorado and uh, Nevada uh, out here are... Uh, Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin, uh, Indiana, uh, Florida, Virginia, North Carolina, and New Hampshire. Although I think New, Ham- uh, New Hampshire and Pennsylvania now seem pretty solidly in the Obama camp to me, so I'd, I'd toss those out. And across those states, other than in, uh, in Florida, it's dead even. Uh, and in uh, Indiana, uh, the president is losing to uh, Mr. Romney. And there's one other state. So in the swing states, Obama maintains uh, uh, a lead right at the margin of, uh, of the error, which is generally plus or minus three points. But still, even at this point, you'd rather be ahead than behind in those polls. So, so those are the states. I think ultimately, always oh, North Carolina is the other state. President's uh, losing uh, in North Carolina. I think he'll lose North Carolina. I think he'll lose Indiana. I think ultimately he'll lose uh, Florida. And that sort of starts to get you the tail. Then you take those other states that are left over, and that's where the battle is. Ohio is uh, also in there, but uh, I've been surprised that Ohio is uh, four and a half, five points on average in favor of Obama. Which... We, I don't, I'm not sure we talked about this, but Rob Portman was one of the people that you suggest right. the president might pick, who's would be a, a conservative, small C, cautious, cho- uh, risk, relatively prudent choice. Uh, would that help him carry Ohio? Would Rubio help might, him carry Florida? Uh, Rubio might be worth a few points in turnout. Uh, I don't think, on, on average, neither one of them helped that much, but Portman won't hurt him in Ohio. Uh, surprisingly, Ohio was, uh, that was a race where on the Senate seat, thought for sure that would be, there would be a Republican takeover there, but after Kasich's win and so on, but not, not so. It looks like, looks like Brown's gonna hold the seat. Okay, well, we'll get back to, yeah. we'll get to that in, in a little bit. Um, now all this, of course, can change, right? You get certain events, the European Union, uh, European collapse. Union, you, the, not it doesn't collapse, but you know the Greeks back out, the markets fall. Uh, then that's all bad for uh, President Obama. Uh, and and uh, so, I, I, so I don't know what the good news for him is. The, it's hard well, to believe get, that the economy is going to jump way. up much. Well, it could. I mean, it, little, it, but it, there could be some. Uh, I, I think if even symbolically, if he could get the unemployment, if he could get, it's a bad phrase. Like he's in charge of it, uh, but if the unemployment rate fell to below eight percent, which it's that would yes, I agree. I agree. Maybe there's some psychological advantage to that. No, I agree. Uh, that would be right. He'd show improvement. He could go in uh, and say, "But I'm not sure that's going to happen." Seems unlikely yeah. at this point. But so I don't see. I think the Obama campaign but, has to be predicated on the fact that there's not going to be much good news. Uh, we, we've got to stay with what we've got. Uh, Romney's not the guy. He'll outsource jobs. Now, to give him his due. Yeah. He has not totally run away from his his record. He he, uh, he will he has claimed will claim that he inherited a bad economy. Yep. Uh, it's better than it would have been. Yes. Uh, that um, the the theme that I've heard recently is we were at a precipice and we avoided the precipice. Yep. The president should get credit for that. Maybe should. Uh, yep. I, I just think it's a hard sell to the American people. Right, but he's a good campaign. Yeah. Um, I want to emphasize as, as an economist, it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. We're not talking about whether it's true that right. it saved us or not. We're talking about whether the average person thinks it's true. The average person's not as good at counterfactuals as the average economist. So right. to say it would have been worse, and we have statistical evidence that it would have been worse, I think is a very tough sell on, a camp, on the campaign trail. 
I agree. And, and so I th- assume he's going to fall back mostly on it'll be even worse if you know we go back right. to the old policies, right. coddling the yeah, rich, It's two points. Right on the positive side, you're saying, I inherited a bad situation. I've done what we've got more to do, but we're making progress. And, you know, the numbers are right. Four and a half million more people were employed when he came in, da-da-da-da. And the counter that the Republicans and Romney make is, well, it's the slowest recovery ever. They're both true. So they're both going to emphasize those facts, and the real guts of it is going to be the negativity part. I I never thought about it, but uh, politics is really just a a matter of agriculture. you you got to cherry-pick the right uh, points and and make them bigger than they really are. Right. Of course, economics has the same uh, phenomenon. Right. But the um, economics models, I mean, the good thing about the economic models, which would tell you, the economic models assume that uh, if candidates are good and the campaigns are well run, here's what, here's what the results should pocket be. Pocketbooks. But count. we know that campaigns and candidates are not always equal, not always run so well. So we, on the basis of, so I use the economic models to say, here's the baseline. Here's what I expect. On the fund. Cateris Paris. Paribus. But the point is, there are some bad campaigns. Doles in 96, I mentioned that. Uh, the worst campaign of my in modern memory, as far as I'm concerned, is the uh, Gore campaign of 2000. The, econ- the fundamentals of the economy at that time were really pretty good. He should have won by six, seven points. Uh, and, and so, so you can you can have bad campaigns that that cause you to lose the election. Well, I know it's not scientific, yeah. uh, but okay. a few things are. So this is the next thing I'm going to say, I'm kind of embarrassed to yeah. say it, is it, but I'm not a political scientist, so yeah. I can say it. But there is a theory that I've always had a soft spot for, which is uh, the candidate you'd like to go have a beer with. And I think, you know, as a as a proxy for likability, connectability, uh, Al Gore, Bob Dole. And I'd add Mitt Romney are not people that easily convince the voters that they'd like to hang out with them a little bit. And I think that's a handicap for of whatever the pu- reason. Of the public opinion questions uh, that, that we ask, which are kind of less scientific because it's sort of like you got a random staff of the American public say, who would you like to have a beer with? That, that's the second best question. Of course, you know what the best one is. The yeah. best one is ask the average voter. Not now, but come mid-September, early uh, October, and ask them, who do you think is going to win? Those are the two best proxies for yeah. what actually, can yeah, you say, yeah, are you kidding me, yeah, are you serious? No, no, I'm serious. The best, the best proxy is you ask them, who do you think is going to win? Yeah, that's, that's the in-trade, uh, it's a casual yeah, version right, of right. the right. Well, Which are all, most often right, occasionally wrong. Yeah, right. Uh, but do, we, do they ask the beer, have a beer with question, really? Do they polls ask, the ask that? Do polls really ask the question, who'd you like to have a beer with? No, there's a series of questions. There are, some polls have asked. We asked that one time, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but so, no, it's, but, but that's the right, there's a whole question, likability. Uh-huh. And Bush versus Kerry, kind of the same thing. Right. I mean, as a, as Even an though element. Even a teetotaler. Yes. <laughs> yes. Teetotaler. Yes. As a, yeah. uh, one element was they like Bush. Bush more, they like George W. Bush oh, the, yeah. more than they like John Kerry. Uh, yeah. They and just remember the you know the comment you made about uh, Romney. You just think of that Kerry going the sail the sail thing where he was windsurfing, the most famous campaign commercial. She thought so he's windsurfing, and you know when you windsurf, you take these big swings left and right, and then in the background they played the I voted uh, I voted for the war just after I voted against it. Right. They had that famous quote. So uh, so the Romney. On the boat, on the the Romney with his wife jet on the skiing. jet ski. That's. Yeah. Well, I, I want to talk about the the internet here for a yeah. minute because I want to come back to something you said earlier. You said in the in the primary season there are these hot button um, issues that hardcore activist members of the party yeah. pay a lot of attention to, but most people don't pay yeah. attention to, and so they get a lot of attention in the primaries. Yep. And then a wise candidate runs away from those and tries not to talk about them as much as possible. They'll come up in the debates, obviously, right. but you, you, you can push those aside if you're skilled. This other view says, well, you got to motivate your base because turnout's so crucial. So how does it, in the modern, in the old days, when you, when you went and made a speech to the particular ethnic group or to a particular uh, constituency of workers, you give one speech there, a different speech somewhere else. It's harder to do that when these clips show up on the internet yep. now. Right. 
And so how, first of all, whether Romney talks about the immigration or social issues, Obama's got all those clips from the primary where he talked about them. He can use them against him, and I assume he will. By the way, uh, the the other uh, real seriously new innovation that uh, we believe affects votes in the last uh, six to eight years is Internet. So that targeting... Just like you think about the internet targeted advertising, right? Google so, you knows. Know, they know. Google gives you yeah. ads. So the fact is that political campaigns have got. So the number of ads uh, that appear, those little clips that appear on, uh, say, on uh, websites that uh, Hispanic uh, voters uh, frequent, the number of uh, commercials uh, quoting that on Hispanic radio stations, it the, the targeting and the mail targeting is. Uh, Really, really extensive now, and very little noted. Very good book by Sunshine Hillegas uh, that has huge service numbers. She's a professor at Duke. She uh, shows how those camp, those little uh, mini campaigns work. So, how does a president? How does a candidate, whether it's the president or challenger, how does a candidate motivate the base? Given that uh, you can't talk about a lot of those things because you're trying to run away from the middle. In uh, this time, uh, Romney has an advantage there in that uh, he is the alternative to Obama. So the base, those people, Tea Partiers, people who don't like uh, the president, they they're they're willing to compromise some of the some of their views on the grounds that uh, whoever is he's better than Obama. Uh, in two thousand and eight, uh, McCain McCain had that problem right because he was never quite trusted by the base. Uh, and Obama didn't because he has it. Now that this year it's Obama's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This year it's Obama's. This year it's Obama's problem. Question for Obama isn't that are the Stanford students going to vote for Obama? They're certainly going to vote for him instead of Mitt Romney. The question is, they're not going to. I can tell you now that the uh, that many that that the enthusiasm it's not there is down. No doubt. Down. So the second, so in, in order to build, in order to the campaign, they have to worry about getting that vote out. So how's, so, so take a couple examples that fascinate me. In an election year where unemployment is high for the president to veto the Keystone Pipeline project surprised me because uh, it doesn't, it, it, it makes it, first of all, it's an easy issue to, to pick on him about. And my simple explanation was, well, he has a strong Part, strong part of his base is people who care deeply about the environment, and they're he's playing to his base. Played played to his base with the environment. I, I believe that's correct. And left the issue open so that after the election we can revisit this, and I'll probably open it then. He's so he can kind of straddle the straddle yeah, it. but short run, yeah. But but your point about same the, with gay marriage, the, that was not an issue that's gonna. You know, there's a lot of talk about this will hurt the president. It's not going to hurt the president at all. People who are for gay marriage are going to vote for, for him, him anyway. People anti gay marriage weren't thinking about voting for Obama anyway, on average. So the result is not net, no, nothing. But that seems to contradict your earlier point that okay, the partisan Democrats can vote for him anyway. The partisan Republicans are yeah. going to vote for Mitt Romney anyway. Yeah. Playing to the base it seems extremely risky. I, I, all I'm really trying to ask you here is there, there's a tension between, obviously, between playing to the base to get turnout up yeah. and, and attracting the moderate independent voter who yeah. is going to be decisive. Right. So, I so think, how, do you, how do they do that now? It's just so like it, that's tough, but I think take the example of gay marriage. Independents, so they swing voters. They don't care about that. I mean, it's not a, they it's may not. be. They may be on average. They were. They were more opposed to gay marriage than for it. But it was. It was like if there were twenty issues that you listen gave me, it was twentieth. Yeah. Right. So they're not going to decide their vote. So Obama can say, "I'm not going to worry about that." Do you th- now that's a very wise. And Romney, when he took this new position. Not so opposed to the president's view on uh, immigra- uh, on immigration, at least. So he had same some thing. ways. Yeah, he's weighing it the same way. Those immigration folks aren't going to go for it. So they're, they're trying to straddle those two, uh, the median of the party and the median of the voter. And, and they want to pick issues that make them look like they're courageous but aren't going to hurt them. Does a typical presidential campaign have... That level of detail, using that level of detail. Do you think they're they're shaping absolutely. their message with that much precision? Abs- absolutely. Uh, presidential campaigns, 
uh, deal with stuff like I let's see should I yeah uh, so I'll give you an example um, yeah I guess I could do this so uh, in a pre- I remember the presidential campaign I, I better not mention specific names so in a presidential campaign where New Hampshire was going to have to be the key because it was a pro-choice Republican candidate. And we knew that, uh, we, and uh, we, the campaign team knew that uh, we had to have New Hampshire. And so we put together this little nice little policy proposal on taxes, a general uh, one on taxing fuel. So there it was, going to be a proposal. Somebody says, what about New Hampshire? The results showed that on average, it would uh, cost the new ha- average New Hampshire person 27 cents a gallon for heating oil in the winter. It's cold state. Gone. Take it off. Don't, Gone. don't support didn't, them. Don't bring didn't, it up. Didn't bring it up because yeah. we knew that. I mean, so there's a lot of. win New Hampshire vulnerable. Yeah, at, and then it turns out now, of course, Canada dropped out before that. But, but the point is. Yeah, there's a lot of specificity on these but, things. You know, it's and fun. fights in campaigns about what you should and shouldn't do. But what I find funny is when people say, uh, we'll say about this president, but say about every president, it's not a, it's not a partisan issue or Obama issue that, oh, you know, he just follows the polls. When he makes a pronouncement, and I assume they all follow the polls. I, that's, you could argue that's a virtue. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's not, uh, I wouldn't, but you, you, one could. Uh, let's move on to the House and the Senate, because I've suggested, perhaps incorrectly, but we're going to wear my little small uh, political science hat, that who is president is not quite as important as people would like to think, that even though this is going to be called the ele- most important election of our lifetime, because right. they say that about every one, that maybe the House and the Senate are more important, given that neither candidate strikes me as a very um, hardcore ideological candidate. I mean, people can disagree about yeah. that, but... I think they're relatively moderate, and it's uh, the House and the Senate are going to have a big impact on what happens in the next eight, next four years in public in policy. So, um, what do we? Yeah, do you want to sure. agree or disagree with that? And then I'm so, not sure. I disagree that both of the presidential <laughs> candidates are moderates, but I do agree with the House and Senate are <coughs> uh, equally, if not more, important for policy. By moderate, I meant that I don't see. Uh, Mitt Romney willing to spend a lot of political capital to make any radical changes oh, okay, in, yeah. in our Well, yeah, well, okay, I see that. And I think Obama will, despite his 2010 experience, I think, or maybe because of it, will be forced to move somewhat to the middle if the House and the Senate are... are uh, well, the House almost, As he has yeah. in foreign policy, overwhelmingly. Right. He has not governed the way people... I like to point out that in 2008... If, you, if I went back in time in 2008 and said, we've kept Guantanamo Bay open, we've, we've bombed Libya, and I mean, he he's, looks like a Republican. Yeah. You'd said McCain won the election if you'd been heard Jack, of Jack Goldsmith uh, wrote a nice piece early, about a year and a half into the Obama presidency, saying 85% of the Bush foreign policy had been in place. But I, I like to think that's for a different reason, because the president of the United States is ultimately responsible for the safety of citizens. And whoever the president is, Democrat, Republican, they see the same thing coming across the desk. They know it's no longer a campaign. You've got to govern now. And coming across the desk is there are real threats to the United States from these terrorist groups. So I actually believe that 80 to 85 percent of foreign policy, whoever comes in, whatever they campaign on, they're going to have to do what, what Obama, like more drone strikes, et cetera, because they have to, they, they, they know if they don't protect the country, if there's an attack, they're, they're, they're in trouble. So, and cause and effect there, it's a little easier to pin down yes, than economics right. where they can. Right. In economics, and it's, a, it's a little, and, and, and also in foreign affairs, they have a lot more room to maneuver because there aren't so many, you know, if, uh, if you propose a health care reform or if you propose uh, stimulus, every congressman and congresswoman in the country immediately knows how that's going to affect their district. They got a public opinion poll, how that's going to work. Whereas their uncertainty surrounded with, well, what if we do this in Iraq? What if we do this here? It's not under your control. So Congress is much more generally, much, much uh, they delegate to the president on foreign affairs. Uh, and then if it works out, they pat them on the back. Think of Bush first, Bush won, how great the uh, uh, war was, first Iraq war. Great, pat them on the back, and then beat them in the 1992 election. Whereas if it had gone bad, they'd have had a lot of congressional hearings and shown how he made a mistake, just like they did with his son. 
Yeah. Uh, so Congress delegates, but in regard to things that voters can hold them directly responsible for, they don't delegate. They 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 fight. So I think the House uh, House this time is uh, almost certainly going to stay Republican. Two forty two to one ninety one now uh, Republican advantage. After the reapportionment, you actually have because of the two thousand ten election, a lot of Republican governors. Probably a Republican gain of 10 to 12 points. Most people who follow this closely agree that. So that would make it 252 to 254 to 180, 79. And what the number of seats they need just, just aren't there. When we go through these races, top 50 seats, uh, that could change, uh, the numbers aren't there. So the House will stay Republican. When you say reports, what you're talking about the re- Drawing of districts. Redrawing of districts. Yeah, yeah census, to the, after the census. Yeah. And the Republicans have a lot of governors. They get a little more. They they got ability. so they got when so states that states that lose like Pennsylvania when they redraw etc. They redrew them favor the Republicans. Texas got 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 four new seats. Republicans control that, so they pick up there, pick up there. So when you a- average that across the country. Uh, yeah, most people agree that the Democrats pick up 10 seats, or Republicans pick up 10 seats. I'm about two things, actually, yeah. now. The population moves to states that are more Republican. Right. And, but also, and the drawing of districts? And the drawing of districts, both. Okay. Uh, what about the Senate? So what's the Senate now? Well, the Senate is uh, 53-47, uh, with the independents lined up with uh, the Democrats. Uh, and 2012 should be a great year for the Republicans because 2006 was such a great year for the Democrats. They're, the number of Democrats up for re-election is uh, uh, double that of Republicans. So, so the question is, they need uh, only to swing uh, three, and they're they're tied. Uh, I would have thought uh, that. After 2010, it would be almost a certainty that the thought, Senate yeah. would be. And now, the tide, given that tide, yes. But now uh, a bunch of states have uh, got. So Michigan, I thought, was a state. Was even now that could have uh, that looked like it would be competitive. Ohio was a state that I thought would be competitive. Looks like th- those are now firmly in the Democratic column. Uh, and other states like North Dakota that looked like a sure thing. Uh, the Democrats got a good candidate, a woman who's uh, pretty conservative, is North Dakota after all, and she's dead even in the polls. So I would say uh, 50-50 uh, or at best uh, 51-49 for the Republicans. And it may actually, when so when you break it down with sure things, leaning, uh, the most interesting thing to me was, uh, in my analysis of it, at least this is the last set of polls, and uh, st- other uh, things we run to see who, what it's going to look like. Cut to come to Massachusetts, which is of the of all. The, in other words, you look at all those states. You can say, well, Ohio is leaning this way. Uh, Indiana now looks like it's going to go Democrat, and so on. Uh, the one state that's dead even that no one can tell is Massachusetts. And that's Scott Brown Elizabeth. Yeah, Warren. so it could come. It could come down to Massachusetts to see who controls the Senate. Because if it's fifty fifty. Then, the, then and suppose Obama gets reelected, then the Senate is a Democrat because Biden would be the breaking, the vice president would be the break, the uh, but tie if, but vote. If, but if Romney wins, then Chris Christie. Not, oh, that, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. you, you didn't mention Chris Christie, by the uh, way. Chris Christie uh, is not going to be the nominee. He would not be a cautious choice. He I do not ra- think he'd a be a cautious choice. choice. First of all, uh, he, he's a spectacular speaker, uh, campaigner, which Romney is not, so it would he could, he's likely to be the kind of guy who overshadows the, your nominee. You don't like that. Two, uh, for the base, he's, uh, he's, uh, not, not, uh, not particularly good on a whole set of issues. Like he comes from a pretty, uh, North, he, so yeah. they're, they're pro-life, the state, he's not totally pro-life. Right. He's not anti-immigration in the same way that the, yeah. some of the base is. So I, not a good choice. Yeah, so he's not going to happen. But, but if whoever is the vice president, if yeah. Romney were to win, then the probably 50 50. Yes, that, so, then that's the deciding vote. Let me ask a, a different question. I, I think if it turned out that, that, that there's an economic issue that Romney hammers on, whatever it turns out to be, maybe it's going to be multiple issues, but if he ends up, let's say, hammering on the deficit, that the deficit, that spending's out of control, yeah. would that rebound back to the Senate races? Does the presidential, the issues that arise 
Now, the, are there coattails in that sense that, that a president can make the claim that I need that Senate to, to stand up to spending levels or blah, blah, blah? Not, he, not that Republicans have ever successfully he, shown a willingness to Democrats. cut spending. Nobody, uh, actually, those, those issues don't, uh, local voters and states seem to kind of resent uh, presidents getting in there. The most famous example, of course, was uh, 1938 when Roosevelt really went after a bunch of House Democrats who were blocking policy, and uh, he got his uh, he got his fanny handed to him. And I got another example is Ronald Reagan in 1982. Uh, in order to get uh, some certain policies through, 81, the budget, uh, he, he agreed not to campaign against certain Democrats as tax and spend Democrats. Really? And uh, did so and refused to go after him on that ground. He did so, I mean, he kept his promise. Yes, he kept his promise. And, uh, and, and so the point is that presidents have not been very successful in uh, bringing people along. Now, they can hurt in various states, uh, Romney, I think, is going to not, he's going to run better in Massachusetts because he's known there than, than, uh, nor, uh, than a normal Republican would run in Massachusetts. So that may help Brown a little bit. But, but you can make sure that Brown is not attaching himself tremendously <laughs> yeah. to uh, Mitt Romney because that, that's not going to do it. So if you, it's state by state. He's running a campaign that says, I'm independent. I voted against uh, my party when I needed to. I'm still pro-choice. I'm not this. I'm not, I'm not a normal Republican. I did this. I did that. He's trying to show how independent he is. Though he does drive a pickup truck, I'm sure, still. Yes, show he's a of course. Guy. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's useful to him. And they both, he and Romney, both wear jeans, I think, to show that they're, I find that amusing. I, I think, like that. Yeah, they may just like him. Though. Could be. Yeah. Could be. I, I think it's a... Like you, I, I think they probably focus group test them. Well, you know, <laughs> on that ground, you have to give the uh, Obama is the first uh, Democratic candidate for president in the last 20 years or so that hasn't had at least three pictures of himself hunting. Uh huh. Because, and that's all about blue collar voters uh, who uh, don't like, uh, who, who uh, tend, to, uh, tend to be Democratic in terms of their pro union and stuff, but. They on hunting and guns and stuff like that. They do not. Uh, they don't favor the democratic, the left in the Democratic Party's position. So you remember Kerry hunting ducks, yeah, yeah. Clinton hunting ducks, Carter hunting ducks. They are caucus in the tank. Yes, <clears throat> it's kind of like a hunting well, picture. <laughs> that one didn't work out so well. But yeah, the, the hunting yeah. thing again. It's yeah. very important. Yeah, <laughs> but but we haven't seen it from this president. But it's early. No, he, he won't. He you don't won't, think he's going to get a hunter? No, it's hard no, to imagine. No, no, not a hunter. Yeah, well, that comes from being an academic. Once you've been an academic, they don't really allow you to and hunt. And at the I University think. of Chicago. Yeah, not many hunters at no, the University no, of Chicago. No, I, didn't, uh, I don't think so. Um, do you want to say anything about the probability? Some people are talking about that if the Republicans win the House and Senate, even though they'll only have it best, as you point out, almost certainly at best, a narrow edge in the Senate, that they will try to um, repeal Obamacare uh, <laughs> without the threat of, a, what, a filibuster, a cloture? I'm not, I forget well, what the right Well, they'll words. have to have a reconciliation budget. So uh, in order to avoid a filibuster, uh, which the Democrats would sure, will surely have, uh, they do a reconciliation budget, which is an up one, up one, down. It was reconciliation budgets were... In the '74 Congressional Reform Act, uh, and then Carter was the first to use it in '78, but he didn't use it. Uh, I mean, he, he was just using it as a technicality. Reagan was the first to use it in the '81 budget because he didn't want to go. So the normal appropriation process has like 13 bills associated with they have to pass. On the reconciliation, you roll it all into one, so you only had to come in. And so the first budget says this is. This is the levels we're going to set. Then it goes back to the committees, and they reconcile the level with what they had been spending. And so the idea was Reagan only had to come on once and say, we've got to get a handle on the budget. You don't want to be there 13 times. So on the reconciliation budget, it's one way they could do it, though the strength of the reconciliation uh, guarantee that it's not a filibuster has weakened somewhat over the last 20 years. So you don't think it's going to be hard. You think it will be? And if Obama's president, they won't. Because? Well, I mean, there's some, because, well, in some sense, 
because he would veto it if they did it. But uh, and 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 so the but the question is, and then they couldn't they couldn't beat that. But but the real question is, you know, how is that going to fit together? That health care bill is amazingly complicated. How will the exchanges work? Given the Supreme Court decision, states want to take the lower level versus the higher, the past level. They can't be in the increases. How those exchanges will work? How many companies are going to take the penalty uh, versus uh, not not uh, not versus to continue to put your own people? On? All those questions are going to be come kicking in about 2014 and are going to have unbelievable implications for the budget. So they're going to have to rework vast aspects of it under any condition. What do you think is going to happen overall with those major policy issues? Do you think it matters that, uh, as you point out, if Obama wins, uh, he'll veto that, any any attempt to repeal Obamacare? Uh, It'll have to be fixed tremendously anyway. Anyway, but do you think Romney is going to push for that? Think he's going to make any uh, hardcore campaign pledges? On my first day in office, I'll repeal Obamacare, Build that wall. Da, da, da. I think what he what 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 he would have really to keep do. Him. <laughs> well, the only thing I no, I would say. So if I was uh, if I was advising the president, well, what would I advise him? I'd say, okay. So the only way this health care bill is particularly relevant to you is the extent in which the taxes go up, and in your view, it's a drag on the economy, and therefore you have to start creating jobs. Which is not going to be an easy test. It's not clear to me that those jobs are still here, that yeah. they're just waiting right. for regulation right. and stuff to drop, and they'll suddenly flow back. Some yeah. of those jobs have gone, and they're not coming back. So, so, uh, I, so the, in order to work, how does health care fit into his overall plan to get the economy running again? And then to that extent, parts of it are going to have to be de- uh, de-emphasized and and there'll have to be changes in the amount of the budget uh and and then that then they'll raise the old issues about cover i mean it's it's about coverage cost and quality right so let's let's flip it around yep. uh romney wins with a fairly let's say uh a surprisingly large popular vote win uh the senate goes republican and they pull out some trick to reconciliation opportunity to get rid of, to vote against Obamacare without the possibility of filibuster. And, Rob- and, and Romney signs that bill. And so Obamacare is gone. You still have this massive yep. <laughs> demographic problem with Medicare or Medicaid, yep. uh, excuse me, Medicare and Social Security. Is he going to, think he, what, what, when is that problem going to get tackled and by whom? Well, the, I think the immediate Democratic criticism will be, which I don't think the, the, there are answers out there, but I don't think the Romney campaign and, has uh, settled on them. The question is, what's your alternative? Yeah, he needs one if he's So coming. for the election, the best thing is he doesn't, that, 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 so I didn't think it hurt him at all that the Supreme Court decided what they did because he could claim the taxes are going up, this is a huge tax increase, and we've got to fix it. And he can just say, I'll repeal it. But, and he doesn't have to say, what are you going to put in its place? And I think uh, that's a problem because, as you point out, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, our, Med- Medicare is a little better shape, but Medicaid yeah. is going to be broke uh, shortly. Disability is already broke. Yep. Yeah, so the question is, uh, they got to have something to put in its place. And putting in its place... And, and it's going to matter. That's going to matter to the American people who like who do like certain aspects of the Obama plan, i.e., what they got for nothing. Right. Everybody likes what you apparently get for nothing, and that trade-off is not it's not obvious to me what the trade-off is. So that's going to be a hard problem for them. Okay. So we're out of time. So give me uh, your summary for uh, if nothing happens between now and November in the outside world. Uh, summarize where you think the the uh, electorate's going and the outcome's going. I think if uh, nothing happens in the outside world, uh, I think probably Obama wins narrowly. Uh, And that's because, uh, that's because I think uh, he's ahead in uh, key states. And I'm not sure that the Romney campaign uh, is going to be adequate to the task. If they're adequate to the task and if they're good, and they make themselves, and they make uh, Obama the issue. That then they win, and they could win pretty handily. 
but you know, gun to my head, my wife and my daughter's lives at stake, uh, with nothing happening. I think probably House and uh, House uh, House Republican, Senate fifty fifty or fifty one forty nine Republican, and the president probably gets reelected, and that's consistent with intertrade and the Iowa markets yeah. on on betting, which is like fifty five forty five. Obama, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be an interesting fall. Yes, it is. My guest today has been Dave Brady. Dave, thanks for being part of Econ. Oh, thanks. Fun as always. This is Econ Talk, part of the Library of Economics and Liberty. For more Econ Talk, go to econtalk.org, where you can also comment on today's podcast and find links and readings related to today's conversation. The sound engineer for Econ Talk is Rich Goyette. I'm your host, Russ Roberts. Thanks for listening. Talk to you on Monday.